Y'all, this is reminding me of Don Machi, delicious in Dungeon. You know, this is going to be so fun. Aloha, everybody. My name is Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator and host of podcasts across worlds. In this video, we are going to do a review slash recap on that time I got reincarnated as a slime season three, episode 61, Invitation for All Nations. The episode opens to a scene with Dorgan. King Gazelle is having a meeting. They are discussing everything that has happened in Tempest with Lubius and the Crusaders. Gazelle's people feel threatened while Gazelle is like, nah, Rimuru wouldn't hurt us. Then they receive the invitation to the festival. That was it for this nation in this episode and I'm assuming we're going to see more of them later on in the season. Then next scene is with everyone's favorite eccentric spirit Ramaris causing a stir. Bored with her labyrinth life, she attempts to build a home in Tempest without Rimuru's permission. This scene highlights playful dynamic between Ramaris, Trini, and Beretta. Then we travel in the majestic sorceress dynasty of Thalion, a nation founded by elves and known for its advanced magic science technology. Here we see the political landscape unfold as Erold father of Aaron discusses the invitation from Rumuru with the Emperor Amesia. This scene is a delightful blend of humor and political intrigue. Amesia with her personality similar to Mulim and Ramaris is intrigued by the prospect of fun and potential profit. We see her cleverly expose the flaws in Arrow's initial agreement with Tempest, highlighting the importance of long-term benefits like transit fees. This exchange also reveals Amazia's keen eye for detail and intelligence gathering as she uses the pieces to deduce Rumuru's origins as an otherworlder. She could tell that he understood human society. And with the advancement of the development of Tempest, she can see the signs that he's an otherworlder. So I think we really need to keep an eye out on her because that was really quick. <laughs> Adding to the humor of this, we learn that Aaron. Errol's daughter has been indulging in the delectable desserts from Tempest. Much to her father's surprise, Amesia further exposes Errol's lack of awareness by revealing Yoshida. The talented Patsia is relocating to Tempest. So back in the last episode, we had Shuna bring Rimuru to Ingresia to recruit Yoshida. I was under the assumption from that episode that it was temporary for just a festival. But it seems like he's permanently relocating to Tempest. Here, Amasia just pokes fun at Arrow by saying, You know, I've been noticing that Yoshida's products have been tasting better. Well, it turns out that he's been getting ingredients from Tempest. And haven't you noticed some of the food, the desserts at Tempest? And it shows like a flashback of him eating a dessert and Aaron talking to Shuna about it. And he's like, oh my goodness. Are you telling me they were using Yoshida's recipes? <laughs> it's so funny because he likes desserts like it seems like he does though by the way he's acting like Aaron why didn't you give me anything when you were giving them to Amesia <laughs> and so oops and so it just adds more humor and brings more personality to Earl the, than I ever seen so I really like this this scene over here 
So this playful exchange highlights the growing influence of Tempest's products. Then Almasia, based on her intel, recognizes Rimuru's strength. Considering his victories over powerful beings like Shizu, Yuki, and Hinata, this recognition solidifies Rimuru's growing reputation and convinces Balian to attend the upcoming festival. So, Amizia definitely wants to go to Tempest because one, it's going to be fun. Fun. Lots and lots of fun. And two, she wants to eat Yoshida's food. <laughs> So I actually want to go back on the topic of where she points out Arold's, uh error with the whole agreement with Tempest with the Rose construction. So if you guys remember in the last season, Rimuru proposed to Arrow that they'll construct traveling roads from Tempest to Thalion and back. Tempest will cover the cost for the construction and Thalion would just need to pay transit fees. Now, Amnesia as an elf, she likes to think of long-term goals, long-term plans. And for her, she points out, you know, we think ahead. And as someone who lives a long time, I like to bring in the profits. And so... She was pointing out, you know, the whole construction cost, that's the short term. If we contributed in the construction of your roads, then we would get a cut from those transit fees. And over time, over years, we would have made a huge profit. And now that Rimuru is a demon lord, most likely he's going to live a long time. So he's going to rake in the profits. So she's pointing that out to... Errol. And during this explanation, she's also giving us a visual of where all the nations are positioned. And it really shows how small Tempest is. However, with its trading, the roads, products, everything that they're creating to build an income, an economy, they really are becoming a economic powerhouse, how like the Eastern Empire was, you know, worried about. Well, not only the Eastern power and Eastern Empire, it was also the Rosals. Yeah, them. They were like, they're just going to take over the economy, blah, 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 blah. So for such a small nation, yeah, they're getting a lot of power with the economy. So anyways, back in Tempest, Rimuru seeks a way to utilize Ramus's unique skills. The solution? Y'all, a thrilling labyrinth dungeon. Ramus, with her expertise, will create and manage the labyrinth, attracting adventures with its monster challenges. Yeah. And it's going to be under the arena she's gonna there's gonna be a door and that door is gonna be led down to the labyrinth dungeon which will offer training for rookies potions for sale and a post adventure bar y'all this is reminding me of don machi delicious in dungeon you know this is gonna be so fun the episode throws a curveball. The lycanthrope refugees currently occupy the intended arena location. That's going to hit a snag because if they're going to relocate the refugees and then build the arena, it's going to push them back and they won't be able to complete it by the time the festival comes around because, you know, they want to use the festival to reveal all, you know? However, however, Ramrus steps in showcasing her immense power by teleporting the refugees' homes and offering to safely relocate them to the labyrinth. This scene emphasizes Ramrus' strength within her domain. Yeah, so 
that's wild because if you remember in the last season when Rimuru teleported everybody to the other areas for battles and whatnot, like with the what's it called where Clayman's uh domain was puppet or something like that, and to the other areas that was like wow we were like whoa that's a lot you're able to teleport everybody to different locations and so with ramirez her being able to teleport not only people majin but also homes buildings items that's a lot however it seems like she's limited to her labyrinth so it's really interesting how this will come out and like what her potential is. Now, with the labyrinth and arena planned, Tempest prepares to welcome the nations for upcoming festival. What challenges and opportunities await? We will see. Now I got some predictions going on. There's some foreshadowing hints we saw in this episode. One, the labyrinth's purpose. The emphasis on attracting adventurers suggests the labyrinth might be a source of income for Tempest, not just entertainment. The existence of a potion stall and bar near the arena hints at a potential adventurer's guild forming in Tempest. This could attract more adventurers and become a permanent source of revenue. Two, political intrigue and alliances. Amizio deduces Rimuru's otherworlder status. This, combined with Alien's connection to the puppet nation of Gustav, formerly ruled by Clayman and the Eastern Empire, connected to Clayman and Yuki, suggests a complex political landscape. And her recognition of Rimuru's strength, despite defeating Shizu and Hinata, foreshadows potential alliances or rivalries as other nations learn more about Tempest and Rimuru's origins. 3. Ramesses' unexploited power. The scene showcases Ramesses' ability to teleport entire structures. This hints at her immense potential that could be crucial in future conflicts or challenges. Ramesses might play a more prominent role in the future battles, utilizing her labyrinth-wielding abilities. And four, the upcoming festival as a political stage. The episode introduces the Sorcerer's Dynasty of Thalion, hinting at the diverse nations that might attend the festival. This could lead to cultural exchanges, potential conflicts, or the formation of alliances, especially considering Thalion's past connections. The emphasis on Amizia's love for food, good food actually, suggests food vendors from various nations might be present, showcasing a more lighthearted aspect of the festival. And it could also be a medium for political discussions or forming unofficial alliances. And that's our review slash recap on that time I got reincarnated as a slime season three, episode 61. What did you think about this episode? Or what did you think about this video? What do you think of Elmizia's personality? Are you excited to see the labyrinth come to life? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more, subscribe. We also host podcasts across worlds. What is number one podcast for anime and manga? We also interview people in the anime industry. So if you're interested in that, link to the podcast will be in the description. Other than that, my name is Lehua and this is a Super Fina channel doing a recap slash review to that time I got reincarnated as a slime season 3 episode 61. Hope you guys like this video and we'll see you on the next one. Ah, we hope.